it's no secret that RT is shutting down and filing for bankruptcy. So a question on a lot of people's minds is what will happen to the future of the show, and honestly I don't have a concrete answer to that, just hypotheticals. It's not to say that I think it'll just be dead end of story considering you have people like Donku Productions, an animation studio that is comprised of people who used to work on Ruby wanting to discuss buying the show, and considering what they've done over the years, I imagine if they got a hold of it, that would actually be something to look forward to. And as much as I would love to say that it happened, I know to be skeptical. I imagine outside the IP being dropped, the more likely option is handing it off to companies who have had ties to Ruby before. In this case, Arxis and Studio Shaft. If Arxis gets a hold of it come 2030 or later, we might get a Ruby fighting game. If Studio Shaft gets a hold of the IP, then it might come to open for more anime. Most likely a continuation of what they already did. Pretty much the story is done from here on out. What happens to it afterwards, if it continues or reboots, most likely won't be the same people on board. It will be taken in different directions, and depending on who gets it, we might get a better story. We might get a worse story. Or hell, we might not get everything. And that whole thing might just be me talking out my ass. Well, not the exact same thing, but I'll take it. I, I, I did figure that... That series did was gonna have life somewhere. I mean, they collaborated with Arc System Works, they collaborated with... It was like Studio Shaft... Like, the series has had a legacy, and I just, most notably, when I made that video, I went off about if they were to continue and everything, if they were to get bought out, right? If they weren't just, like, going to be shut down right then and there, they, I imagined they would have been bought out by somebody or a company that they've collaborated with in the past. I was right on that, I was just wrong on who. Because I guessed Arc System Works, I guessed Studio Shaft, which I, again, I don't know the legality behind animation studios owning certain IPs. Not sure about that. Uh, I could, it, there could be water in that, I don't know. But, yeah, I just, I just didn't know. Viz Media was not one I really thought about. Like, I considered, like, even like Dylan Goo Productions and Bandai uh, Namco, because I mean Dylan Goo Productions had like I'm pretty sure that's a company that is comprised of people who used to work for work for Rooster Teeth and worked on Ruby. So there's that. But then there's like Bandai Namco who've had their hands in anything anime related. So there's that. But yeah, I didn't expect Viz Media mainly because I mean the one thing I've really heard about them in regards to Ruby is the one-shot manga which got cancelled. Even then, like, Rooster Teeth sort of buried it. Like, and then decided, yeah, let's, uh, let's start over with a new manga series. I kind of feel like bringing it back up because I, I guess in its own way, while I didn't outright predict it happened, I did have a pretty educated guess on, yeah, it would have been bought out by people who've collaborated with them. Technically speaking, yeah, Viz Media has collaborated with Rooster Teeth before. Why not try to play that? Why not try to roll that dice? What's there to lose? So ultimately, when it comes to Viz Media, um, I do think that it is very likely that Ruby might be canceled again. I I think that is very likely because you do have to consider that, unlike say with Rooster Teeth, where they had more, they did have more say in the matter with what they focused on. Again, they were also eventually under the supervision and management of Warner Bros, who were the ones, I believe, to either greenlit or cancel projects of theirs. They were the ones that shut them down. So now we're moving on to Viz Media, and if you actually take a look at what Viz Media has in store for, like, their catalog, uh, yeah, whether or not they need Rooster Teeth, I think is completely and utterly irrelevant. Because they really don't need Rooster Teeth to be, be famous, honestly. They have, like, if you actually look at their catalog, like, right now, they have Chainsaw Man, they have Jujutsu Kaisen, they have One Piece. They, that's what they own. So, anybody who's defending this series saying, like, oh, like, uh, I mean, like, absolutely, like, I mean, this is for the best and everything, and I don't necessarily know about that. Because this could just be just delaying the inevitable, depending on how, what goes down. And if they decide to, and it might happen, if they decide to greenlight Volume 10 and go forward with it, not really changing anything, 
or not or essentially not getting the right people for the job, most likely Ruby's going to be dead in the water. That's just the truth. So what I feel like needs to be happened is with that, I think it would be best to just start from scratch, just reboot the series. I don't care if it is in manga form, I don't care if it is an anime. Reboot the series. And I think that would actually be more beneficial. Because one, yeah, Ruby has reconned a lot of stuff over the course of its lifespan. And I feel like if it had a chance to like reboot, you could have a more clearer vision for what the story should be and a more cohesive consistency with what you set up. Because yeah, while people can argue that, oh, they had a they had a roadmap, I imagine, no, they didn't have a roadmap. I imagine they had probably, not even like storyboards. I think they had like the bare bones, like story details, like this, they uh, characters go here or introduce these characters, so on and so forth. Just like the little details and it's just like leading it up to the hands of the writers. So now, like, I think ultimately having a reboot of Ruby, I think would probably be for the best, because you can take a lot of the story that you were working with and roll it back and actually go, all right, uh, what worked, what didn't work, what could we do to improve it? Now, that said, I don't think that in and of itself rebooting it is going to be a surefire method of, oh yeah, this series is going to be successful. Not to mention that most likely there are going to be people who never gave a fuck about Ruby, who are, like, actually, like, big fans of what Viz Media puts out. And you're gonna end up getting most likely people who see updates like, oh, man, what is this series? Ruby. So they, the people who've never seen this series, or their extent of the knowledge is whatever Viz Media put out, like that one-shot manga I talked about. I don't think it is as simple as, yeah, let's just start over from scratch. It'll be fine. I think it is a little more complex than that. I think you have to do a lot more than just starting from scratch. I think you have to, not just new people, get new people who know what they're doing. Cause that's, that's the biggest caveat. Like you can get as many new people as you want, but if they have no actual uh, experience in telling a story such as Ruby, right? Then you're gonna have a lot of problems. This has happened in the past four, like, I know so many people, including myself, didn't like, for example, uh, Ang Lee's Hulk. Yeah, that was, uh, not great. Not a great plan. <laughs> if you get the wrong people for the wrong job, then ultimately I think you lead it to, uh, being a disaster, one way or the other. Actually go out of your way to introduce people to this series who not only know what they're doing with the kind of like genre and medium and everything. But also, on some level, also have it like actually storytelling in terms of like Ruby, like actually seeing the potential for what it can bring and tapping into that that the writers previously either didn't want to or didn't know how to. To do that, I think, like for example, Hyosetsu Teikoku, regardless of your opinions on it, that is definitely tapping into what the potential that Ruby can bring and using it in a different light. And then there's also, again, the fact that it is Viz Media, the people who own Shonen Jump, and uh, you can look into this as much as you want, but Shonen Jump is uh, not a great track record with some series in particular, particularly uh, just making the series go on for much longer than they really should be <laughs> when they're popular. I think, for example, like, Food Wars is a great example of a series that just went on way too, like, far longer than it was supposed to go on, because, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was clear that the writer of Food Wars was just like, look, I'm done. I, I don't want to continue making it. Oh, you want me to do it? All right, uh, n all right, instead of cooking with food, now we're cooking with actual dynamite. It's just like, yeah, it, it feels like it jumped the shark on that one. It's not just like continuing on, it's also editorial influence. Viz Media owns work, some pretty big works. One most notably, uh, Dragon Ball. Viz Media owns that. Oh, and I think technically speaking, it is Shueisha now. I think it used to be Fuji TV. I think it's Shueisha, but Viz Media does publish it. 
So yeah, they make they make profits off of that. So there's that, and anybody who's familiar with Dragon Ball's like uh, Android Saga knows about the editorial influence, most likely, that went on with the series. So yeah, there's that can happen. So ultimately, it's not to say that yeah. I mean, like I could pull up a list right now of series that ultimately like because here's the thing, right? When I say like you know. Viz Media doesn't need Rooster Teeth or Ruby, I legitimately mean it, because you look at some of the series that they own. They own Death Note, they own Bleach, they own Burn the Witch, they own... They own quite a bit, honestly. They own Komi-san Can't Communicate, they own Persona 5, the manga. They own a lot. And that's just, that's not even half of what they own. So, if they decide, you know... Ah, you know, we're, we're just gonna cancel the series, uh, we're gonna let go of Rooster Teeth and they're just gonna die. Uh, they don't really lose any money over it. They really don't. They have more than enough material and an uh, entire catalog where, like, just losing Ruby is not really going to be problematic. But that said, like, it's not to say that Ruby can't actually offer anything of value. Because again, you do this right, uh, you can have Ruby as one of the top series on Viz Media's charts. Absolutely. But that's all on account of, you're doing this right. If you don't do this right, uh, Ruby is going to, I most definitely be compared in numbers to other, like, uh, Shonen, Shonen works or other Viz Media properties that are currently popular right now and currently ongoing. Ultimately, if Ruby doesn't make the, uh, numbers that they're necessarily looking for, well, then, uh, it's very likely that Viz Media can just discontinue and cancel the series, because I'm pretty sure they've done that before with other series that weren't necessarily, like, had potential but weren't necessarily successful. Here's what I imagine will happen if they greenlight Volume 10 with little to no changes whatsoever. What's most likely gonna happen is... It's gonna be popular... for three weeks. For like the first three episodes or so, it's going to be popular. And then you're going to see a nosedive in numbers. And then you're going to see a lot more people criticizing it, so on and so forth. If if that comes down to it, most likely, I mean, Viz Media might also say like, nah, we're, we're not doing it. Like, the numbers, the numbers in terms of how Ruby performed on Volume 10 was, it was not to our standards. So we're just going to let you go. And people can deny that that would happen, but we live in a world where series such as, oh, I don't know, Hi-Fi Rush, and particularly companies like Square Enix exist, where anything that isn't on the, that isn't Final Fantasy, they, or even Kingdom Hearts, they most likely just let go. And I don't think continuing the series for Volume 10 is going to be the right course of action. Because on one hand, you're most likely going to have the same problems on the other hand. Even if you bring in good people, that is a bad sign across the board. Oh yeah, uh, Ruby, it gets good after volume 10. You're going to see those comp. It's good after volume 9. It gets good it, it gets good at volume 10. It gets good after 300 episodes. Which is a long way winded way of saying, uh, you, you'll like it, just get to the part where I like it. There's a reason why, despite how many people actually kind of dropped it. There's a reason why My Hero Academia was able to go on for as long as it did. There's a reason why Boruto, despite how many people bitch about it, is able to able to still continue making issues. And that is because at the end of the day, regardless of how your opinions are, people are still tuning in. Whether it be to hate read it or hate watch it, or be out of genuine interest, there are people that are still tuning in. The worst thing a show can have, legitimately no people watching it. That's the worst thing you can do to a series. If nobody's watching it, then uh, nobody's watching it. I do think it is a good thing with Ruby that, yeah, it got picked up. And it didn't just die in the water. Because, like, look, contrary to what some people online think, legitimately a vast majority of people I know who talk about Ruby and criticize it don't do it because they hate it. They do it because they actually liked what it was initially and are sad that ultimately it's it really looks like it's just wasting its potential. 
most likely what is going to happen if Ruby doesn't essentially do as well as Viz Media essentially would want it to do. When it's not successful and it gets cancelled, ultimately instead of people actually saying that, yeah, maybe it's because the show is not as good as we want it to be, you're going to get the same people who are happy that Viz Media took Ruby in, and then you're going to get the same, and those same people being pissed that Viz Media took Ruby in. And then there's the option of, why doesn't Rooster Chief just go more indie and actually just, just do the work themselves? Well, if they could, they would. That's the thing. If they could, they absolutely would. If nobody's watching Ruby, if nobody's paying attention to Ruby, the series doesn't make money. If they can't make money, well, you're not going to have people who uh, are going to work for you. If you don't have people going to work for you, nothing gets done. Now, unless it is like a hobby-based thing, right? If you're doing it because you love it, right, and you're enjoying it, that's fine. But also, you have to do keep into account a lot of other stuff. For instance, do they have the means to do this? Uh, yeah, not everybody is going to be on that level. Some people are just going to be shit out of luck and jelly well fucked. And then what? Like, regardless of how good you want to say a series is, uh, if it can't get done, nothing can get done. And if you have a problem with it, well, then give them money. Maybe they'll just give one of the head writers uh, an artist and let him go off, right? Maybe there was some things behind the scenes that ultimately led to Ruby being as is, led to Ruby having so many problems. Maybe that was the case. Or maybe that problem was self-inflicted. Maybe Rooster Teeth just wanted to crunch more and more and more. Which, considering the amount of testimonies, rumors, and allegations that have been come out about that company in regards to their properties, yeah, I don't doubt that most likely uh, a lot of the quality of their series and everything, or the lack of, lies on them. It just feels like I don't really see this working out without, like, some major overhaul and some major reconstruction to the series. I don't think Ruby is ever going to be as popular as it was in its peak, which a lot of people, which I will ultimately argue was when it was announced for Crosstag. Like that was, I think, the peak of its success. Because after that, the series started to, a lot more people started to see problems in the series, uh, and it just kind of went downhill from there with the company. If there are really any major complications with the uh, with the staff, like the creators or whatnot coming under fire for some actual allegations and actual like crimes and whatnot, if there are some messed up shit, the series is just gonna get canceled. Like Viz Media doesn't want anything. Viz Media and our companies like them don't want anything to do with people like that. For example, take Act Age, the manga. The creator uh, was found, I believe, guilty of sexual harassment and or assault of teenagers, I think? Either way, the series got immediately cancelled and dropped. Like, not even funny. Not even saying that was funny to begin with. But still, like, it is. That, that is the sign where it's just like, yeah, when a company does that, watch your fucking ass, alright? Don't go fucking up. But yeah, if it if it does well, if it actually has people who know what they're doing and everything, right? I think it can. I think it can still hold water. I think it can still have life. Cause it, like I, I'm talking about like all these downsides of why Ruby King class, right? But at the same time, it's not out of hope for seeing the series series die as much as it is for seeing like no. Yeah, I would like to see a series succeed, but this is reality where uh, not everything can go the way people want. So you're just gonna end up having, uh, like, disappointment after disappointment if you don't actually go with this with a skeptic eye. The truth. At least that's how I, at least that's how I've seen it.